This is Humble Woman Ministries, and today I wanted to talk about being married in God's eyes. So the reason why I wanted to discuss this topic today is because I have heard lots of Christians, mostly young men, mostly newer Christians, who are maybe a bit immature in the word, maybe a bit immature in the world, who believe that they can cohabitate with their girlfriend and fornicate with their girlfriend and they're, quote, married in God's eyes. But that is just not the truth. There are several problems with that way of thinking. Number one, it dishonors God, and I'm going to clearly show you uh, that doing marriage the legal way honors God, but not doing marriage the legal way isn't uh, honored by God at all. Uh, number two, uh, having sex outside of marriage is fornication. Number three, fornication is a sin. And number four, the most unloving thing you could possibly do to your potential spouse is to leave them in a situation where if something happened to you, if you should suddenly die, um, that your wife and children are without legal recourse uh, and um, cannot inherit your property or your insurance or your retirement account in order to provide for them in your absence. So part of being married is a responsibility and the responsible thing to do when you get married is out of love, making sure that if something were to happen to you, that your family is cared for and provided for. Because anything other than that is really just selfishness and you're operating in a spirit where you want all the benefits of marriage without the commitments of marriage and that's just plain wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and start here and in Hebrews 13, 4, where it says marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. So the reason why I wanted to share this particular scripture with you is it says marriage should be honored by all. And that includes being honored by men. And when you get married, it is also a commitment uh, in front of men as well as God. In Hebrews 13, 14, God says that honoring the honoring of marriage by men is something that should take place. And so in keeping with uh, scripture, we want to please God in everything that we do. And we can please God by um, getting married in a way that can be honored by both God and men. Okay, so I've popped over here into Malachi number two, uh, chapter two, Malachi chapter two, and uh, I'm showing you the scripture in particular because it does state that marriage is a covenant. It says that a woman is one's wife by covenant. Uh, he goes on to say that he hates divorce, which is the breaking of that covenant. So have you made this covenant before God? If so, why would you not make the same covenant before men? Which is what God commands us to do when he says that the marriage should be honored by all. I'm going to go ahead and go over to John chapter 4 and we're going to talk about the woman at the well and the conversation that she had with Jesus. Okay, I'm in John chapter 4, verse 16. He told her, speaking of Jesus, go call your husband and come back. I have no husband, she replied. Jesus said to her, you are right when you say you have no husband. The fact is, this is a fact straight from Jesus, you have had five husbands and the man you now have is not your husband. What, ha what you have said is quite true. So the woman at the well with whom Jesus is talking with about living with a man and both she and Jesus agreed that this man was not her husband even though she was living with him and this surely implies that her relationship outside of marriage was sin. They were not married in God's eyes because Jesus said that they weren't. And Jesus went on to tell her that she needed to be born again by trusting in him. I am now in Ephesians chapter 5, and here Paul is indicating in this particular scripture that the relationship of a husband and a wife is designed to picture uh, Christ and his bride. It's, it's created to reflect the relationship that Jesus has with his chosen people, which is the church. And God takes our conduct in marriage very seriously because it reflects on Jesus. Ephesians 5 chapter 31 states, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. The two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I am talking about Christ and the church. 
And my guess is that people who choose not to go through a marriage ceremony do it because they don't want to make the commitments that a marriage requires or implies. They also think that terminating the relationship can be done without a divorce, and in practical and legal terms, at least where I am from, they have a common law marriage anyway, whether they want to admit it or not. And when God himself entered into a relationship with man, he did so with the means of covenants that he made with them. He made the Abrahamic covenant, for example, in Genesis 12, and the Mosaic covenant, which is in Exodus 20. And now we live under the new covenant, and it is these covenants that the Lord makes with us that gives us, as believers, the assurance and confidence that God will keep his word. And in the same way, when you legally marry, uh, that you are giving your spouse the assurance and the confidence that you also will keep your word to them. And it's important to understand that it was God's covenant promises to us with the patriarchs that is the basis for Moses' appeal to God for Israel, which we read about in Exodus 32, 13. And in fact, if we want to dig a little farther into uh, Moses in Deuteronomy, I believe, he talks about a certificate of divorce, issuing a certificate of divorce, which clearly implies that there was also a certificate of marriage issued to the Israelites in the Old Testament. Now, living uh, in a relationship with someone that is not in marriage, but is rather just living together and assuming that you're married in God's eyes is inconsistent with the covenants and the practices and the patterns that God sets forth to us in his word. And so I want to pose these questions to you if you are still against getting legally married. Would you buy or sell a home without a legal contract, without any documents or commitments? Would you expect a bank to lend you money without any paperwork or commitments or contracts? Of course you wouldn't. I think that a lot of times people want to say they're married in God's eyes only so they can avoid any commitments, which not only is in loving towards your spouse, but it is sin. And so I want to close with this. Uh, marriage is a sacred a commitment between you and your spouse. And when you truly love your spouse, uh, you are going to, in fact, uh, make sure that they're protected. Make sure that they have assurance and confidence in you and your relationship that if something should happen to you, that your family is provided for. And it also, um, I think, brings a more solidified commitment to the actual relationship when you, in fact, legally uh, marry. And I'm going to finish out here really quick with a really quick article that I found on Got Questions, which is a really great website that I refer to a lot when I do have specific questions about certain things. And this particular um, website, this particular webpage, discusses Romans 13, 1, 7, which states, Everyone must submit themselves to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do what is right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and he will commend you, for he is God's servant to do you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. And of course, in Hebrews, we did see that we're, marriage is supposed to be honored by all. And since we are Christians, we are to obey the governing authorities, which is laid out for us in Romans 13.1. And so I ask for those of you who are still trying to tell yourselves that you don't need a marriage contract in order to be cons considered married in God's eyes, that you read these scriptures 
scriptures uh, and ask the Lord for guidance and direction. And I hope that you come to the conclusion that I have, which is that uh, marriage is a good thing and it's to be honored by all, not just God, but also men, because that is God's design. I hope this is very helpful for some of you. Uh, I personally have seen this so much that I felt like I needed to address it, and I hope it was a blessing for you, and God bless you. Amen. As always, if you enjoyed this content, please check out more Bible studies in my Bible studies playlist, and be sure to like and subscribe.